You need to put the hat on. I'm not, I'm not putting the hat on. You know what will happen if you don't put the hat I'm, on, Dave. I'm not putting a hat on. Hi! Welcome to the second part of our PC building guide. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to get your PC set up once you've stuffed all your precious components inside. This video was kindly sponsored by MSI, who provide us with all the great stuff you see in the PC case behind us, so that we can lend a helping hand to newbie builders in need. So let's jump in and get setting up our rig. Hashtag yes we build. Since this is a fresh build, you need to start the operating system installation from scratch. Make sure you've got everything plugged in and switched on ready to go. Not that we would ever forget to do that ourselves, of course. And hit the power switch. You didn't turn it on with the power switch. Yeah, that's how we build. But first up, it's a good time to get that motherboard BIOS updated. You'll need to get the latest BIOS files downloaded onto a USB stick, so hopefully you've got another computer or computing device available for you to download that onto. While you're there, you also need to get hold of the Windows installation ISO file, but more on that later. With your updated BIOS in hand, plug it in and boot the machine up. Unfortunately, every BIOS is a little different, and for this MSI Gaming Pro Z370 board, we will need to navigate to mFlash. Depending on your motherboard manufacturer, you may be looking for Flash Utility for Asus, QFlash for Gigabyte, or Instant Flash for ASRock. Locate the USB drive in the list and select the previously downloaded motherboard BIOS. The system should take care of everything from here on out and hey presto, one updated motherboard. With some high-end motherboards, you can actually update your BIOS by simply pressing a switch with the USB attached, so you can check your manual to see if this is available with your particular board and save yourself the hassle in BIOS. Before we move on, you want to ensure that your memory is running at its rated speeds. This means you'll need to switch to your overclocking tab and ensure the correct XMP profile is selected. It's all too easy to buy super speedy RAM and forget to ever bump the speeds up. We've all been there. So this is also where you can overclock your CPU, but we won't be going into that right now, that's for a future video. From the BIOS, you can also change your chassis and CPU fan speeds. For liquid coolers like the one in this PC, it's always good to double check that the system is running the pump at 100% at all times like the manufacturer intended. So now onto the super exciting bit, the Windows installation. We were actually lying about this being super exciting. It's actually dreadfully boring. Yet again, you'll need the Windows install on a USB drive, so hopefully you have this to hand. Failing a USB, you could also use a disk, but you know it's 2017. Disk? It's easy enough to get the all-important data onto a USB stick though. Um, Microsoft created the Windows Media Creation tool and that will get it all sorted for you. Plug in the installation media and start the machine up. Your PC should recognize the USB drive and begin the installation process without any intervention. If not, go back into BIOS and set the installation media as the top boot priority. While this installation is fairly self-explanatory, you'll need to ensure that you have a license key ready to go and that you are installing Windows on the correct boot drive that you intend to run off, usually a speedy SSD. Now leave your brand new PC for a while and go frolic outside, or you can do what we do and just stare at the installation bar. Once you've gone through all the customization options, personal info and met Cortana, Master Chief's longtime AI friend turned Microsoft Edge salesperson, you're ready to log into Windows. Now comes the, honestly the most exciting part, kinda, if you're into that sort of thing, updating your drivers. Right, so first you need to get your Ethernet cable plugged in or set up your Wi-Fi. Chances are you've probably been prompted to do this during the Windows installation process, but either way you need to download the relevant graphics card drivers from either AMD or Nvidia sites. Make sure to download the most up-to-date drivers, as these can offer new features, bug fixes, support for the latest games, and if you've been very good, you'll sometimes even get performance updates too. Now patiently wait as these drivers install. Depending on whether you are Team Red or Green, you'll have a few different steps to fill out to access the full Radeon Crimson or NVIDIA GeForce software, essentially to register or not to register, that is the question. From within the AMD or NVIDIA driver software, you'll also need to make sure you change your colour settings from limited RGB to full. You won't regret it. Once you've got the relevant graphics card drivers installed, you have free reign to download whichever apps take your fancy. Steam. If you have a liquid cooler installed, you may also want to download the relevant Steam. software from the manufacturer. Steam. We disagree on whether you should download Firefox or Chrome as a browser of choice, so we're going to take this outside after filming and sell this once and for all. Steam. <laughs> <laughs> Before the fists start flying, however, if your build is using the same Samsung 960 EVO SSD as we are, then you want to grab the latest drivers for this component. That means you'll get the absolute full potential from your SSD. 
And while you're there, you might as well grab the Samsung Magician SSD tool too. Right, so the final step, but arguably the most important. We really cannot stress enough just how important this step is. Yeah, you've absolutely got to go and download the RGB lighting control software for your computer. It's utterly critical that you get those LEDs sparkling and flashing in all their multicolour glory before you go any further. Forget installing Steam, Anti-Malware, Battle.net, Discord, or any of those other secondary apps. Sort out your lighting for your keyboard, mouse, GPU, motherboard, and whatever else they put RGB LEDs on nowadays. Yeah, you know, back in my day, like, they, they, the only LED we had was on the power switch. Yeah, here we go. Anyways, we're using the MSI Z370 Gaming Pro motherboard here, so we've downloaded the Mystic Light software. This will allow us to control the lighting not only on our motherboard, but our MSI Gaming X Trio GTX 1080 Ti GPU as well. This allows us to sync all our internal lighting together and brings us one step closer to enlightenment. With all your peripherals ablaze with glorious rainbow effects, you are ready to go. Install the latest games you have been patiently waiting to play. I mean, what was this all for if you aren't going to game on the damn thing? It's this PC's god-given right. It was put on this earth to fulfill one purpose, tear through the latest titles with performance that no other silicon can ever dream of. Or, you know, watch Netflix. If all has gone well, and we absolutely hope it has, um, you have a brand new gaming PC sat in front of you ready to game on. So with that, thanks for watching and give us a like and subscribe if you found this build guide helpful. Also make sure to check out the rest of the channel and all the latest and greatest gaming and hardware on the website. Let's be honest, Jacob, they're not listening to us, they're just looking at their brand new gaming PC. Yeah, we'll let's, just, to it. let's just leave it to it. Okay. See ya. Oh, Dave, you forgot your hat? <laughs>